suspiciously quiet at first, but uh, thank you, Aidan, for discovering that the mic's battery had run out prior to uh, service. We just w welcome to Grace. We hope that God has brought you in doing a little skip in your step to see some water that uh, we so badly need around in this area. So we just ask that you stand this morning and join us in this, in this first song.
Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome here this morning. My name is Pastor Shane. I'm the Family Ministries Pastor, and I would love to uh, have a few announcements with you guys before we carry on in our service this morning. If you are new, we just want to especially welcome you and would love for you to stop by the welcome desk in our foyer. Uh, we have a welcome gift there for you, and we'd love to get a little bit more information. Uh, upcoming, uh, here uh, tomorrow actually, we have a vacation Bible school uh, uh, kind of get together uh, where we're going to be talking through our VBS, which is July 4th to 8th. There's still room available for your kids to join in on our VBS program. Uh, so feel free to do that on our church website, uh, graceairdry.ca. And uh, the VBS meeting is going to be kind of planning and going through the different things that we need to be able to run VBS. So uh, you can either talk with me or talk with one of our children's directors, uh, Deb or Dana, here uh, after the service for more information about that. So that will be here tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m., uh, the VBS meeting. Uh, we have a busy weekend next weekend on Mon uh, sorry on Saturday. We're going to start Saturday morning with our men's fellowship time. Uh, we're going to be having breakfast, which uh, the youth boys from our church are going to be making breakfast for the men. So that will start here at 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, then after the men's fellowship breakfast, we do have a work bee. And uh, we'd like to invite everybody to come out. That will be starting about 10 a.m. from 10 till 2 on Saturday. And there's lots of different projects that we're going to be looking to try to get done here in the church. So I would love for you guys to come on out and to be a part of our uh, both our men's fellowship breakfast and our work be next Saturday. Uh, and then on uh, Sunday, after church from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we will be having our free family summer kickoff party. Uh, this is going to be also in conjunction with our Grace Soccer, which is wrapping up this week. Uh, it's been a really great year of soccer, lots of really cool connections that we've been able to make with some uh, awesome conversations with new families that uh, just hadn't even heard about our church. So um, we want to just provide an opportunity not only for our church, but then for those connected to Grace Soccer to come out to uh, an, uh, an event that just lets them as a family uh, have fun, connect, and for us to be able to do that alongside them and uh, with other people. So that is going to be here from 3 to 5. So there will be bouncy castles. Uh, I've been experimenting making iced coffee this last week. So I've been getting my caffeine fix, so to speak, just uh, practicing the iced coffee. But there will be cotton candy and all this kind of fun stuff for the kids. And uh, if you have uh, an opportunity to come by and maybe help out with the events, uh, either just stand by a bouncy castle and make sure the kids are doing okay to making some popcorn, Love to have a conversation with you if you can help out there as well next Sunday. Uh, we want to thank you as well for your faithful giving to uh, Grace here. And uh, if you want to do that this morning, uh, right across from the welcome desk in the corner, there is uh, a debit machine as well as the offering uh, plate is kind of there that you can uh, put your uh, check or cash uh, offering in uh, there at that little, I don't know what we're calling it, it's a little L square thing in the corner. Just over there, over there in the foyer somewhere. So thank you for your continued giving. Pastor John. Well, good morning. Uh, this morning I want to uh, call up uh, Cam and Cheryl. And uh, this is a, one, one thing I do want to mention is uh, Cam and Cheryl as they come forward here. Two weeks ago about, I think it was, uh, Cam and Cheryl have recently been, been married. So congratulations uh, to both of them. So. Unfortunately now, they're taking a long honeymoon down to Lethbridge. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is going, uh, Cheryl has uh, taken on a position in Lethbridge and uh, Cam can kind of work from wherever. And so we're going to miss them within our congregation here. Uh, Cam has been involved in uh, numerous ways with our financial oversight team, uh, with our men's ministries, with our ushering, uh, snow shoveling. And uh, I, I think that, that covers a, probably a lot of it, but maybe more so. And uh, so, so, you know, we'll, we'll miss Cam in terms of uh, a lot of the volunteer help that he has given to the church here. Uh, Cheryl's been uh, instrumental in a lot of different ways as well with decorating, with helping at our welcome desk as well. And so, so we uh, thank uh, both of them and we wish uh, God's blessings on both of you. And so let me just uh, have a prayer before Shane uh, prays as well. 
Lord, uh, we want to just pray for Cam and Cheryl. We thank you for the way that you've worked in their lives to draw them to yourself, Lord, to draw them to each other now. And we pray your blessing upon their marriage. Lord, as they uh, move to Lethbridge now, we ask that you would just use them in their work settings, Lord, that you will connect them with the great church there to continue to grow spiritually. Thank you for all the work that they've uh, provided uh, within this uh, setting here and for, Lord, the way that they have impacted the kingdom as, as well. And so we just pray that you will continue to use them for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you. So would you stand with me as uh, I open up our service in prayer here this morning? Father, we want to thank you uh, that we can come to your house this morning. We we even just want to thank you for the rain this morning. And thank you that uh, you are looking after your creation. You are uh, turning the grass green. You're helping the farmers' fields to grow. So thank you for that. And thank you that uh, you have control over all things. And Lord, we want to honor, worship, glorify you this morning. So as we uh, turn our focus and attention, even just through singing some songs, Uh, as we listen to your word from Pastor John. Uh, Lord, we ask that uh, you would be doing your good work that you have uh, promised to complete in us uh, through the ministry uh, here at uh, Grace this morning, through our uh, collective uh, gathering, through our opportunity to hear your word, through our opportunity to uh, praise and glorify you. Uh, May you be transforming us into the likeness of your son through these different things this morning. Uh, so we commit our service into your hands. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were mistaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you in love how can it be that you my king would die for me 
Please be seated. Well, thank you, uh, Steve and uh, uh, team for leading us in time music. Uh, good morning, Grace, and to those who are watching online here. You know, it has uh, been great to uh, see finally some rain that has come here. Uh, I know over the last uh, week it kept saying, rain's coming, rain's coming, and then I check, and no rain's there yet, and, and finally we got some rain here today. So uh, good to see it. We'll brighten things up, and uh, we look forward to uh, just God's blessings in our lives. Uh, in your bulletins, you can uh, take uh, there, there's an outline for today's message that we'll uh, carry on with uh, from our series. You know, the longevity of any marriage is built on commitment, and it is a commitment to work through difficult times when they come, knowing that better times wait just around the corner. And so as I continue on the topic of righteous living, from the Sermon on, on the Mount, I want to talk about marital commitment. You know, every marriage, it starts off with the idea of living together as husband and wife until death parts them. And some of the building blocks of a good marriage are expressing genuine love, submitting to one another, keeping your promises, being faithful to each other in action and in thought, and pressing forward during the stormy days when they come. Sadly, however, many couples end up in divorce courts for reasons that override the building block of loyalty to each other. You know, in a blog post uh, from the McLean Law Group, uh, who has a, a law firm in Calgary and also across Canada, they note about 40% of marriages in Canada end in divorce. You know, that'd be about, you know, four couples or four people out of ten, say, in this congregation have gone through a divorce or are maybe going through a divorce even right now. And so in the blog post uh, from this uh, firm, uh, they talk about some of the top five reasons why people get divorced. Well, one of them is money. In a recent study, 68% of respondents said fighting over money was their top reason for getting divorced. Infidelity was the second reason, understandably, uh, particularly when tied to other underlying issues such as anger, resentment, fundamental differences, and growing apart. Falling out of love was another reason why people sought a divorce and sadly often associated with couples focusing on their busy lives, uh, work, children, community, rather than working on maintaining a healthy, loving relationship with their spouse. And so they've fallen out of love, and so they seek a divorce. Another reason was lack of compatibility. Over time, spouses may find that they are not aligned on the same values as they once were, the same basics of family life, you know, children, jobs, morals, etc. You know, sometimes resulting in frustration and resentment and detachment. And then another reason, or a fifth reason, that this law firm uh, lists is domestic abuse. You know, reg regrettably, domestic abuse is sometimes a reason for divorce in Canada with over 40,000 arrests for domestic violence in Canada every year. And so there's a multitude of things that affect our lives, that affect our lives as married couples. And every couple will go through difficult times, but thankfully many churches and parachurch ministries like Focus on the Family and Family Life Canada want to help strengthen marriages. You know, there's nothing better than to see a married couple become winners in their marriage relationship. And so we want to help as a church here to strengthen your marriage and to help you go forward in God's design for your life. In Matthew 5, 31 to 32, in which we're going to uh, focus on for this morning, which you can also look in your Bibles here, but Jesus carries on from his topic of marital fidelity and he addresses the importance of marital commitment as he focuses on the topic of divorce. And so Jesus says 
in these two short verses. He says, It has been said, Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So as we go into God's word here this morning, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, today we come to your word. Once again, uh, these are some challenging words to us uh, in the Sermon on the Mount on righteous living. Lord, we pray that uh, you would just uh, work in our lives. Lord, strengthen our relationships with one another. Strengthen the marriages that are here today for those who are watching online. And Lord, that uh, we would carry on with the the values that you call us to. And so I pray your, your guidance through your spirit on the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, God doesn't like divorce, and one of the reasons is that divorce uh, often creates uh, hardship uh, for an innocent spouse. You know, when Jesus states, it has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce, he refers to the Old Testament law on marriage and divorce given by Moses. And in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 to 4, This law is stated. Moses says, If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house, and if after she leaves his house she becomes the wife of another man, and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house. Or if he dies, then her first husband, who divorced her, is not allowed to marry her again. You know, uh, although the, the abuse of the marriage partner was a harsh reality in ancient times, and, and God gave Moses this law, or this kind of a, you know, to add to the divorce policy, this added regulation. And really this policy was meant to do uh, three things for the marriage relationship. It was to protect the sanctity of marriage from something indecent, uh, defiling it. It was also to protect the woman from a husband who might simply send her away without any cause. And then thirdly, it was to document her as a legitimately divorced woman. And so this law was given, but it was not God's original intention for marriage. You know, it, it was God's original intention was, that, intention was that a man and a woman would be joined in love for the rest of their days. And so as Jesus states later in the book of Matthew, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Well, by the time of Moses, many husbands were sending their wives away for any reason, leaving the wife stranded and alone. And it was very hard on the women, on the woman in that day. And so because of this, God gave Moses this law to make it more difficult to divorce and to protect the wife. You know, a husband had to, first of all, obtain a certificate of divorce. It couldn't just be you sent her away, so you had to obtain a certificate of divorce. And then it could not be just for any reason. There was a reason that would be attached. And so the law, it should never have been needed in the first place. But because of the hardness in a person's heart, the law was made. Even Jesus alludes to this later in the book of Matthew in verse nine, uh, chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. He says, um, and uh, the Pharisees are asking them, uh, him, why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Well, Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. You see, laws come into place because the heart is not transformed. Why do we have so many policies, you know, in our lives today? 
It's because the heart is not transformed. And so there's, there's outward regulations that can try to control the different aspects of our lives. And so laws are meant to protect both the individual and society from harm. And so for the woman, this law provided security. It provided protection in some ways to her. Divorce was now limited to certain causes, something indecent. And these causes had to be confirmed by at least two witnesses that there had been some indecency in the wife. And so failure to produce the evidence meant there would be no divorce. While the wife knowing that, uh, uh, was secure knowing that her husband could not just on a whim send her away packing, he needed a certificate of divorce and also evidence or uh, other witnesses. You know, in Canada, there are also divorce laws to govern the breakup of marriages. And prior to 1968, there was no federal divorce law within Canada. Those who wanted a divorce had to apply for it through their provincial government. And adultery, cruelty, and desertion were the three main reasons one could seek a divorce. Outside of that, you could not. So adultery, cruelty, and desertion. Well, this sometimes led to ugly court battles and difficulty in determining evidence for a divorce. And, and some spouses were left in situations of entrapment. But the Divorce Act of 1968, it introduced the concept of permanent marriage breakdown as a ground for divorce, while also retaining fault-based grounds uh, for divorce, the most import important, which were adultery, cruelty, and desertion. And so the intent was good, but it began to make divorces a lot more easy in our country uh, for people to obtain. And in 1976, permanent breakdown of marriage became the sole ground uh, for divorce. And then in 1985, another bill was added to this law uh, passed, reducing the required uh, time of separation from three years to one year to meet the grounds for divorce, the marriage breakdown. And so as a result, after 1985, Divorces across Canada, they rose sharply because you didn't have to wait three years, you only had to wait one year, and it could be on whatever grounds you might find to divorce your spouse. And so in 1987, it rose to 98,000 marriages being dissolved in that year, a sharp increase when the, when the law was changed. Well, in Jesus' day, divorce was also being made easier and easier to obtain, depending on what school of thought you subscribe to. And so the lawyers of that day, they looked for loopholes. You know, they looked at the wording only and not at the intent of what the law was given. These uh, lawyers, rabbis, and scribes, they argued what, about the word, what did indecent really mean uh, in that clause? And essentially, there were two main arguments on divorce in Jesus' day. One approach uh, was a conservative approach by Rabbi uh, Shammai. And Rabbi Shammai held that something indecent meant sexual immorality and was the only allowable reason for divorce. You see, there were no other possible grounds for divorce except for adultery. Well, Jesus clearly agreed with the conservative view of Shammai uh, in the debate over this law concerning divorce. There was only one justifiable reason for divorce, and that was marital unfaithfulness or sexual immorality. And so the, the, the phrase sexual immorality, it comes from the Greek word pornea, uh, from which we get our English word pornography. It is essentially sexual deviancy from God's intended design for marriage. Jesus had just talked about adultery. And in the context, the word pornea points back to adultery which severs the marriage relationship. And so that was the conservative view. Only one reason. 
Well, the liberal approach was another school of thought uh, by Rabbi Hillel, and Rabbi Hillel emphasized the preceding clause, a woman who becomes displeasing to him. And so something indecent became linked to this preceding clause, and it meant more than just adultery. Well, William uh, Barclay in his commentary noted, uh, notes that this school contended that it meant that a man could divorce his wife if she spoiled his dinner by putting too much salt in his food. Some silly reasons. If she went in public with her head uncovered, if she talked with men in the streets, if she was brow uh, a brawling woman, if she spoke disrespectfully of her husband's parents in his presence, if she was troublesome or quarrelsome, and a certain rabbi said that the phrase, if she finds no favor in his sight, meant that a man might divorce his wife if he found a woman whom he considered to be more attractive than his wife. This was the liberal approach to divorce in Jesus' day. And so really a man could divorce his wife for you know, anything that he disliked about her. Even if she burned his food while cooking it. And so the wife would be pretty tense, uh, I'm sure, most uh, days in the house in that time. And you might say, well, this is ridiculous. You know, how could, you know, someone do this? Well, that's exactly how Jesus felt when he entered the scene that day of what was going on. You know, where had the commitment gone in the marriage relationship? Why did people want to take the easy route out? You know, why did they not work through their problems? And so the laws allowing for divorce in Jesus' day, they were becoming softer and softer. Secondly, the reason God dislikes divorce is that it shortchanges God's blessings. You know, sometimes, and whatever it might be in life, we can miss out on what could have been because we bailed out too soon. And every marriage, it will go through three uh, stages, three phases, from enchantment to disenchantment to enrichment or maturity. Or, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. It could be thought about, you know, the, the phases of the moon. You know, first is the full moon, then the new moon, and finally to a full moon once again. And so when you look at the, the phases of a moon, you know, the full moon could be described as, you know, the first full moon as the honeymoon in a marriage. And, and this is generally a period of six months to two years of harmony within the marriage relationship following the wedding. And it can be described by such phrases such as, I'm on cloud nine. We are perfect for each other. It feels just right. You are my soulmate. I love you forever. You are captivating, charming, and beautiful. Nothing is better than this, and we have arrived. And so there can be a lot of, you know, happy phrases within this honeymoon stage of a, a married life. But then as the full moon begins to, you know, go darker and darker, it hits the new moon phase. And this is also known as no moon, when the moon is between the sun and the earth. You see, the back side of the moon is lit up, but the side facing the earth is in darkness. And so nighttime, when there's no moon, it can feel very dark, and it can feel quite eerie at times. In marriage, this period, you know, the dark moon, it might be short, or it might go on for years. And some words that describe this phase might include distant, incompatible, splintered, I'm hurt, I'm bitter, this feels wrong, I give up, I feel trapped, and will never make it. And so you can enter a period of darkness. You see, it is in this stage that divorce can occur because darkness has overtaken the marriage. Yet do not make hasty decisions in the new moon phase. You know, when all seems dark, for what is still there, for what is there is still there. 
You see, the moon is still lit up on the backside. It's still there. It just needs to be illuminated once again by the sun. And your marriage once again needs illumination by the sun, S-O-N, Jesus. And so you'll go from the honeymoon stage to a period of, you know, uncertainty or, you know, what's going on here. But then eventually you'll end up in the full moon cycle, you know, a mature moon. And so from a new moon, the moon begins to shine brighter and brighter until it hits its full moon stage. You know, the darkness has dispelled and earth is lit up once again. You see, in the dark moon phase, differences are pronounced and become annoying. You know, at first, you can handle differences in a person's life. But eventually, they might tend to get annoying. And that often is in the dark moon period. While in the return to the full moon stage, differences are welcomed and appreciated. And so you move on to enrichment and maturity. Phrases that might describe this stage of a marriage are, I need you. I'll help you. I feel comfortable. Let's work it out. I'm thankful. And together, we'll make it. You see, when Jesus spoke these words, he wanted to keep marriages intact in that day. You know, for what God has joined together, let no one separate. Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, it states, Be on your guard, and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. And so it was becoming easy for divorce in that day. Jesus came to raise the bar of marital commitment. Do not bail out simply because of something you dislike or cannot handle. And so, you know, if you don't like the way the the food tastes, then maybe it's your turn to start cooking. Or whatever the issues might be. You see, simply put, do not place the blame on your spouse when the problem lies with yourself. And so God does not like divorce. And then finally, he doesn't like it because it damages God's design. You see, later in the book of Matthew, when the Pharisees questioned Jesus on divorce, he brings the ideal of marriage back to the original purpose of creation. And so in Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 to 6, Jesus responds, Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. You see, marriage in the beginning, it reflected God's image, and it was a means of propagating the human race. It really became the basic building block of society. You know, Jesus clearly states in this passage that marriage is between a man and a woman. It's not between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. You see, that is to mar God's image and destroy the purpose of marriage to go forth and multiply. You see, divorce for any other reason than sexual immorality, is to destroy God's image and his intention and work in the world. Divorce, it also messed up the orderly conduct of society. For example, keeping track of one's genealogy became, you know, that much more difficult. You know, today, trying to do genealogical lists, they can become quite hard to do at times because There's so many changes within family structures and family life. Well, that was an important aspect of the Jewish culture for genealogical lists determine future inheritances and the roles in societies such as the priesthood. Jesus says that to divorce your spouse for any other reason than adultery is to put that spouse into a relationship that God never intended. You see, God intended that you stay with your original partner. And in that day, a woman who was sent away with a certificate of divorce, she would likely get remarried 
for survival. If she didn't, it would be very hard to survive. And so what happened is that it put both her and her new husband into an adulterous situation. She, because it is with another person other than her original spouse with whom she consummated the marriage with, and the new husband, because he is taking someone that belonged to another man. But really the onus is on the one who is giving the certificate of divorce for unjustifiable reasons and not the victim in this situation. You see, it seems that the one who divorces someone who has committed adultery is free to remarry. And the one who has been victimized because of some unjustified reason that they were sent off in a divorce is also free to remarry. And so there's different debates on, you know, whether one can get remarried or not, but it seems from what I see is that there are times when a person can get remarried. And so as I close here this morning, you know, this is a hard subject for many people because so many people in our, in our culture have gone through a divorce. Most of us likely know of someone who has gone through divorce uh, in our families or in our, with our friend circles or colleagues, someone that we know. And it can be very difficult for people that go through a divorce because they might never have seen it coming. It can feel surreal. And some divorces, they are more amicable than others, but it often forces people to take sides uh, for either spouse. And it can ruin livelihoods, it can put children into a tailspin, and it can affect a person's well-being. And so that is why we want to strengthen marriages. You see, the good news is that there is life after divorce. Sometimes we might think there's no life after divorce, but there is life from couples that I've seen go on. You know, at Grace, we offer a course twice each year called Divorce Care for those who are recently separated or divorced. And it, is help, it helps them to get their feet back on the ground and move forward with God. You see, Jesus understood the tremendous effects that adultery and divorce has on marriage relationships. He came to protect the victim and to uphold the value of marriage. Hebrews 13 verse 4, it states, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. And although divorce will continue to happen because the human heart needs to be transformed, you know, the good news in Canada is that divorce rates are actually going down. They're getting better. Uh, Canadians are becoming more committed to their marriage, to their spouse and children. And on the Canadian government website, it indicates since the Divorce Act came into uh, being in 1968, the number of divorces in 2020, uh, just a couple years ago, was the lowest since 1973 and less than half the highest number recorded in 1987. And so that's good news that, you know, the divorce rate is going down. You know, in 1987, it spiked to almost 98,000 divorces granted uh, after the amendments uh, to the Divorce Act. And so since then, the number of divorces, though, since 87, they have kept falling. Uh, from 2019 to 2020, there was a sharp decline of 25% less divorce. Now, that might be attributed because no one could access the course uh, during those years of COVID. So we'll see what comes up in 2022 and 2023. But uh, the good news, at least in the last few years, it kept uh, certain people together. Bad news in some ways, there might have been more domestic abuse in which we heard about as well. In Alberta, there were 22% less divorces in 2020 than the year before. And so there have been some key societal changes that have contributed to the general decrease in divorce rate over the last three decades. You know, the aging of the marital uh, married population 
And there is a lowered uh, tendency to divorce among younger married adults in particular now. They seem to stay more committed to each other. As well as some uh, separated couples, those who get separated, they may never legally get divorced any longer. And, uh, and young people do tend to be uh, marrying at an older age, and so that also plays into factors. So there's a number of factors here, but you know, um, if, from that standpoint, divorce rates are getting better in Canada. But re- whatever the rates are, I think you know, for us who are here today, for those who are watching online, in your marriages, commit yourself to each other. And do not bail out when minor or even major issues come along. You know, work out your issues for the sake of your marriage, spouse, children, yourself, others, and God. You see, only adultery on the part of your spouse gives you the right to divorce. Yet even then, God may call you to try and reconcile. And it's not always possible in in many situations, but some are able to do this. You know, many couples have experienced this type of forgiveness and and have gone on to successful marriages because they recommitted themselves, you know, in love and faithfulness to God, to each other, and to the marriage. And so Jesus came to strengthen the marriage relationship. He comes to strengthen yours as well. And so let me pray uh, and commit our marriages to God uh, during this time. Father, we uh, want to uh, just come before you. Lord, we uh, thank you for the marriages that are uh, here present uh, within our congregation, for those who are watching online. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, strengthen them. Lord, uh, whether they are in the honeymoon phase of their marriages, I pray that they would just uh, continue to experience your blessings their love for one another lord for some of our marriages right now might have entered into a dark moon phase lord where we have questions we have doubts we have hurts and i pray that in this stage that forgiveness would be offered lord that uh, the couples that are here would find ways to work through these uh, times and lord that um, out of this stage, we know that the, uh, the new moon or the full moon is coming once again. And so we pray for that. We pray for mature mar- marriages in, in each one. Lord, that you would use our marriages to be that building block of society, to be the building block uh, in reaching others for you as well. And so we, uh, we thank you. We pray your blessing upon this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, before we uh, uh, sing a a song here this morning, I want to uh, just lead us in a time of communion. And, you know, when we uh, think of, uh, you know, what Jesus did for us, you know, he came to this world. He was committed for our good. He was committed for our eternal uh, destiny in heaven within, with him. And so, you know, Jesus will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is someone that you can count on every day of your life. And so ultimately, our faith needs to come back to Christ and his work in our lives. And from there, it spreads horizontally to our relationships, whether they are married or not. And so this morning, if uh, you have a a cup, uh, or if you don't have a cup this morning, just raise your hands, and one of our ushers will get you a, a communion cup this morning. So we'll just wait uh, until everyone has. When Jesus uh, had met with his disciples, you know, it, it it was a hard time for him. He knew what he was about to go through. This was the dark moon of his life. This was a period where He could have said no to going through for what he's done for us. And yet he stayed committed because he knew the outcome. He knew a full moon was coming. He knew that better days were ahead. And so in that, Jesus stuck with each one of us. And he stays with you even today. 
And so the bread, it uh, represents his suffering that he had to go through during that period. The blood represents the sacrifices that he, he went through on behalf of each one of us as his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so, sometimes in marriages, we go through similar things of times of suffering, times of sacrifice. But ultimately, we remind ourselves what Jesus did for us. And so this morning, if you have the bread here, we are going to partake together. And so Jesus offered it to each one and said, Take and eat this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup, representing the sacrifice, the blood that was shed for each one of us for the forgiveness of our sins. And so let us partake together. Father, today we uh, thank you for your great commitment to each one of us. Lord, that you have suffered, you have sacrificed for us. Lord, knowing that the better days could lie ahead, and they do and did. And so we just pray that, Lord, as we follow you, that we would have hearts of full commitment to you. Lord, that we would follow you through the, the rest of our days. Lord, making a difference in our society, in the places that, where you call us to live as well. And so we, uh, we thank you for all that you do for us, and may you be blessed because of this. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close with uh, one final song here, but uh, as you go, may God uh, you know, bless you, and uh, may he bless your marriages and your families as well. God bless. Please stand with us.
so much for coming this morning. Uh, we hope that through uh, Pastor John's words and music, you're drawn closer to the one who is here with us this morning because we're gathered in his name. So we know by through the promise of his word that he is with us also. So uh, we hope that if you have a chance, uh, take a few minutes and, and uh, meet somebody in the hallway or outside or in the Connections Cafe and say hi and introduce yourself. In the meantime, we're going to uh, do one final song as you head out. Our Father, who art in heaven, 